In Unit 3, we're going to look at truth tables for conditional statements, also biconditional and equivalent statements, and De Morgan's Laws. First, we're going to look at the conditional statements, the if-then statements. To show all the possibilities of the if-then statement, let's look at the truth table for the if-then statement. We have our four different possibilities for P and Q. True, 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 false, false, true, and false, false. Now the if-then statement is only false when the if part is true and the then part is false. So here we see false in that second row. All the other values are true. And think of the if-then statement as a scientific theory. You know, if something happens, then something else happens. The only way we can state or show that that theory is false or incorrect is if the if part is satisfied. You know, we satisfy the hypothesis. The if part has happened, but the then part doesn't happen. When that occurs, we say it's false. If we don't satisfy the hypothesis, if, we, if the if part's not satisfied, we can't disprove that theory. Now we're going to look at the converse, inverse, and contrapositive. Let's suppose our original if-then statement is, if I jump in a lake, then I get wet. The converse is obtained by switching the if and then parts around. So the converse is, if I got wet, then I jumped in a lake. If our original statement is true, would the converse always be true as well? Well, if you jump in a lake, you do get wet, right? If you got wet, does that mean you had to have jumped in a lake? Well, no, there's lots of different ways you can get wet. It could just start raining suddenly. So it just doesn't seem like it follows. The way we show that these two statements are not logically equivalent to each other is with a truth table. We have our four possibilities for P and Q, true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. We have a column for the converse, which is given as if Q then P. We have then a column for if P then Q. Now remember that an if-then statement is only false if the if part is true and the then part is false. And here Q is the if part. So let's find the column entry where Q is true and P is false because P is the then part. Well here in the third row down we see Q is true and P is false. So we have if true then false and that gives us our one false value or if Q then P, the con converse. So this shows that the statement if P then Q is not logically equivalent to if Q then P. And this is because we have different truth values for the column if Q then P and if P then Q. For if Q then P we got true, true, false, true. And for if P then Q we got true, false, true, true. This makes the two statements not logically equivalent. Now let's look at the inverse. The inverse of if P then Q is if not P then not Q. So here the inverse of if I jump in a lake then I get wet is if I don't jump in a lake then I do not get wet. Well, Logically that doesn't seem to be equivalent to the original statement either. Just because you don't jump in a lake does not mean you do not get wet because it could start raining again and you'd get wet even though you didn't jump in the lake. We show this for sure with the truth table. Again, we have our four possibilities for P and Q. True, 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 false, false, true, and false, false. In this table, we need columns for negation of P and negation of Q. And we get those by just negating the P values of true, true, false, false to get false, false, true, true. And likewise, we get the negation of Q column by negating the Q values. We have to have these negation values because they're part of the final statement which is if negation of P then negation of Q. Remember the if then is only false if the if part's true and the then part's false. And that only happens in the third row where we have true false. So we have true true false true for our truth values for the inverse compared to true, false, true, true for if P then Q. This shows that the statement and its inverse are not logically equivalent. 
onto the contrapositive. The contrapositive of if p then q is if negation of q then negation of p. For our original statement, if I jump in a lake then I get wet, the contrapositive is if I did not get wet then I did not jump in a lake. Well if you're dry and you're not wet, that means you could not have jumped in a lake. It seems like these two are logically equivalent. Well let's show for sure with the truth table. We have our four possibilities for P and Q. Our last statement or one of our statements we're showing in the truth table is if negation of Q then negation of P. So we need columns for negation of P and negation of Q just like for the inverse. We negate the P values to get the negation of P column. We negate the Q values to get the negation of Q column. And then for the contrapositive column, if negation of Q then negation of P, the negation of Q is our if part of this logical statement. And the if thens only false when the if part's true and the then part's false. And we only have negation of Q true when negation of P is false in the second row. So only the second row is false for the contrapositive column here. So we get true, false, true, true. Well, our original statement, we had the same thing, true, false, true, true. The truth table shows that the contrapositive is logically equivalent to the original statement. And there's another interesting observation here. If we look at the converse, we ended up with true, true, false, true, and the inverse also had true, true, false, true. It turns out that the inverse is the logical equivalent of the converse. Let's take a closer look at the if and only if statement. P if and only if Q is indicated with P and a double arrow pointing to both P and Q. First let's look at the truth table for this statement. Here we have the truth table, the four usual sets of values for P and Q, true, 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 false, false, true, and false, false. P if and only if Q indicated with the double arrow in the column to the right is true when both P and Q are true and it's true when both P and Q are false. The if and only if statement is false if P is true and Q is false and it's false also when P is false and Q is true. So in other words when P and Q both have the same values, truth values, the if and only if statement is true. I summarize this with the statement P if and only if Q means P and Q are events that both always occur at the same time or both do not occur at the same time. And here's an example that you may have seen in a previous algebra class. P is the statement X equals 6. Q is the statement X plus 4 equals 10. We can say that P if and only if Q is a true statement or we can say in this case x equals 6 if and only if x plus 4 equals 10. Now if x happened to not equal 6 then x equals 6 would be a false statement but also if x happened to not equal 6 then x plus 4 equal 10 would also be a false statement. So if x is not 6, in other words if p is false then the statement q is also false. Likewise, if x equals 6 is true, then x plus 4 equals 10 also has to be true. Here's another example. A person is clinically considered alive if and only if they have a pulse. If they're not alive, they won't have a pulse. And if they are alive, they will have a pulse. The two go together. When one occurs, the other occurs. When one does not occur, the other does not occur. Another way to define P if and only if Q is as if P then Q and if Q then P. In other words, we show that both the statement and its converse are both true. And we show this with the truth table for if P then Q and if Q then P below here. We have our four rows for P and Q true, 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 false, false, true, and false, false. We have a column for if P then Q. We get a false value in that second row where P is true and Q is false. 
So that gives us true, false, true, true. We have a column for if q then p. And that false value occurs where q is true and p is false, and that's in the third row down. So we get true, true, false, true. Now the AND statement combining these will only be true when both parts are true. And we get this in the first row where we have true, true, and also in the fourth row where we have true, true. So we end up with true, false, false, true. And notice that's the same thing we got in the table above, true, false, false, true. And this table shows the equivalence between p if and only if q with if p then q and if q then p. In other words, that's saying p causes q to happen and q causes p to happen. And stated another way, the two events, p and q, either both occur at the same time or they both do not occur at the same time. On to De Morgan's Laws. De Morgan's Laws say that when you negate P or Q, you get negation of P and negation of Q. And when you negate P and Q, you get negation of P or negation of Q. All you have to do is remember to negate each part and replace or with and, or replace and with or. Here's an example. Find the negation of the statement P and negation of Q. To negate this statement, we just negate each part. So we negate P to get negation of P. We negate negation of Q to get just Q. And then we switch the AND symbol to an OR symbol. So we get negation of P or Q. In a second example, we're finding the negation of negation of P or Q. We negate each part, so we get P and negation of Q, and we use the AND instead of the OR, so our answer is P and negation of Q. That's really all there is to it. Just remember that rule, negate each part, and replace OR with AND or AND with OR.